This is the Friday, September 20th version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Don Rose. Don, welcome back. Thank you, Mike. We've got a couple of questions here that I think we'll start off with. Curious about harvest. It's that time of year. Poncho in southeast Iowa started harvesting this year. He's curious how widespread is harvest? What are we seeing out well, in the corn belt? Well, last week we had corn harvest was 4% complete. We're not that far behind uh, normal. What we've seen is a pretty aggressive harvest in the south and the mid-south, trying to take advantage of the big premiums that we had in corn, trying to erode. So I, I think, uh, you know, the harvest was aggressive. It's starting to, uh, you know, move more into a normal harvest right now. Of course, we have the uh, delayed stuff in the way north, which will uh, slow things down also. Okay, and then ongoing rains are going to be your regular harvest delays and so forth, but we're getting started. We're getting started. Soybeans, uh, you know, just really getting started. You know, they'll pick up over the course of the next 10 days. And of course, soybeans go very quick once they get started. You bet. And Mitch has a question. If we have a positive basis for corn out in the field, should we be selling it or holding it? Well, most definitely, I think that's uh, don't hold for those huge basis inversions that you had last year because I don't think they're coming. In fact, the market's telling you with the carry in the corn market between Dece and July at 28 cents, it's really telling you that we have an adequate supply that we're going to have to carry. A year ago, that was 25 cents inverted. So the job of the producer is to market with a positive basis, and if you don't, go to work and lock in those uh, carries in the marketplace so that you at least get re a return on your investment in your storage facilities. Okay. Now, as we look to next year and look broader, Calvin and Bernard, Iowa, is curious, is 2013 a transition year for farmers in terms of input costs, farmland, all of the other things? What does the future look like? How should producers be preparing? Well, we really do think it's a transition. In fact, we think since uh, 2010, the thing that's kept pushing uh, the markets higher and uh, caused really the uh, craze in a lot of the uh, grain agriculture is the fact that we've had four short crops in the U.S. and we've had some world problems uh, with production also. But as we're moving forward, what we've really found out is that we brought a lot of world production uh, you know, out of the woodwork. And so that's what we're going to have to compete with. So we think moving forward that the big challenge of the market is how do I uh, market when I don't have these big cushions and we've got some strategies that we think make some sense for new crop corn and beans and that's window contracts for 2014 may not be too early to be thinking about that Mike going ahead setting some margins so at least you know have have a framework in which to operate through next year is that kind of the thinking yeah that's that's the uh, the idea you look out to 2014 for example we closed at 490 roughly on Dees corn so what you do is you lock in, you give yourself uh, 90 cents up, 90 cents down, you spend about uh, 15 to 20 cents, you buy a 490 put is what you would do, you would sell a $4 uh, dollar put, so that gives you that move down. At the same time, you have about 90 cents uh, up, up to 580, and our insurance rates last year were 568, so Gill still gives you the opportunity to go up but it prevents uh, big losses in case this is a transition year, which if South America is a big crop, it probably is. Now, one of the big concerns with the transition year, of course, is the stickiness of prices. And you've been in the business a long time. Looking at the, the high cash rent values we've been seeing, how likely is it that those will start to turn down if we get a big crop this year, if South America has a big crop? What's it going to take to bring these down slightly? Well, and, you know, because, uh, you know, what we're seeing so far is the rents this last, uh, for this up upcoming year, have really not changed a, a lot. In fact, in some areas, they've even went up. So I think what you really have is a lag year. Remember when the grain market pushed up uh, the first big up year, uh, we had the input costs were still very low, so you had that big opportunity for the jump. Now we're on the other side of that coin where what you're going to have is possibly high input costs and you're going to have prices that really aren't there to sustain it. So hopefully, you know, uh, people are able to uh, roll ahead and conserve some of that cash. Ready to maybe have a belt tightening year as things catch up. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, we know that it, it comes, uh, you know, eventually, and it's been, uh, you know, time in the making here. So we're probably getting closer to that day of reckoning where things get a little bit tougher for the green end of it from a marketing and uh, merchandising standpoint. Okay. Now, one of the other big stories this week that we didn't get a chance to talk about on the show was the, uh, the, the big export numbers for soybeans. Can you talk to us a little bit about your thoughts? Are they going to continue? Is this a new demand dynamic in beans or... 
What, what are we seeing? Yeah, one thing you always look at in a market is it's more important how you react to news than the actual news. And we had a huge export uh, sales uh, on uh, soybeans, and the market uh, actually went down on that day. It did not go up. So it tells you that type of export news is already in the market. And the reason is because we're already front-loaded on soybean export sales. You know, that's partly what drove this market up. We've sold 61% of our soybeans that we're going to sell for the year already. Normally, that's 44%. What we're really doing is we're on hold waiting to see what happens happens to South America. People have bought ahead, uh, you know, to a certain degree. If South America, you know, crop looks like it's going to be large, you know, in February the exports uh, taper off. So I think it's one of those, you know, we have big world supplies uh, possible, uh, you know, tight U.S. supplies, you know, very similar a year ago, but I don't think we're going to get the same reaction as we did last year. Okay. And even though we're still dealing with, most likely dealing with those same export troubles we had in South America, the market is willing to pay that uh take that risk of delayed delivery for a much cheaper crop, potentially. Yeah, and that's a good point, you know, and hopefully, you know, they did have a, a lot of shipping problems last year, and hopefully, as they've uh, moved through in another marketing year, that some of those are uh, are taken care of. So hopefully it gets uh, better as we move forward, Mike. Okay. We've got a couple other questions here. Scott in Nashua and uh, Cheryl in Wisconsin have uh, started chopping corn that time of year again, and uh, they're both curious, are we seeing more chopping this year in some of those... Uh, potentially lower yielding ground that got planted late or got rained out, or are we stacking up historically we're on track? What, what are you thinking on chopping? Well, silage? you know, last year was, was the big chopping year because, you know, there was a tremendous amount of uh, chopping going on because of the, the corn crop size. I would say this year we're back to more of a normal. I know if you're in those prevent plant areas and those delayed areas, it seems like there's a lot more silage being cut. But I think we, last year was our bigger year. I think we moved back to more of a normal year this year. Those tough areas that get chopped change year to year depending on weather conditions, but historically stay about the same. Yeah, they really do. Usually, uh, you know, our uh, harvested acres are about 91% uh, of planted. They don't change a lot from there. You know, they're uh, 90 and a half to 91 and a half, and that's been pretty uh, much a historical range. All right. Thank you so much for being with us, Don. I appreciate your thoughts this week. Thank you, Mike. Have a great week, and uh, thanks to all of you for watching and submitting your questions via Facebook and Twitter. Please continue to do so, and we will continue to get expert analysis for you. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.